we're going to continue on with our systems uh, in the pass game. Okay, so we're going to go through, and I'm going to break this down into um, three more sessions. Okay, of of the full field pass schemes or concepts. Um, again, remember, uh, keep it four to five plays. All right, or concepts. All right, get really good at them in your base formations. And then start adding more schemes and adding tags, adding formations, that kind of thing. So right now we had drive. We talked about drive. And then today, you know, on these next few sessions, I'm going to talk about cross, mesh, and stick. Okay. Now, we do run spot sometimes. Okay. And that's, that's a scheme that I'm going to add to the, to the systems uh, as we go. As um, this thing is going to be interactive through Glazer Clinics. And uh, we're really excited about it. And so I'm going to be adding content to this um, as we go. All right, so let's talk about cross first, okay? Uh, cross is, for us, a very uh, pl a multiple play that, that's good versus anything. Remember, that's what we want in our full field pass concepts. We want plays that we can take into any game. We want plays that we can... Um, you know, take into to versus any coverage and be comfortable with it. Remember, true progression. That's what we want. True progression. And we want our quarterback working that true progression and, uh, and, and not having to worry about, you know, are they in cover one? Are they in cover two? Are they in cover four? You know, and then who do I read? What do I do? You know, we have it all built in with our progression. And it gives, you know, the quarterback a way out, like I talked about with our drive concepts. All right, so again, you know, just, just a quick review over if you skipped over the drive and skipped up the cross and full field concepts, gets quarterbacks options, a way out, uh, has answers built in the coverage, uh, I mean, built in the concept no matter what coverage is, make teams defend the entire field, you play faster, more tempo, a, lot, a faster tempo when you can run true progression and full field concepts. And again, makes game planning more efficient. Remember, we want to be great husbands, fathers, um, family men, and we want to be great football coaches. And you do that by being really efficient with your time, managing your time well, and then you don't get all stressed out and you coach better, okay? So, all right, making full field concepts successful. I'll review this really quickly because I went through it with our drive stuff. Install it, three to four schemes, master base formations, reps, 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 reps. Uh, give quarterback different looks in practice, draw cards daily, and call it, all right? And, and you guys are hear me repeat this a lot uh, with these full field concepts. Okay, cross. Now, you can do a lot of different variations with cross. A lot of different variations with cross, okay? And you can do a lot of different things on the one side of cross, all right? And you can do some things with the back as well. All right, so what I've got drawn up right here is the base way that we can run cross uh, out of, out of uh, cheetah personnel, okay? So this would be why cross, okay? Again, remember, we want to get great at this first. Well, you can get into where your Z cross, H cross, X cross, and you can formulate it, you know, get it in different types of formations all you want, but you got to get good at, at, at the base way first. Okay, so we day one install, we install Y cross. Then we get into, and I can, and I've got some film on it. I'll show you some more condensed, more condensed formations, more um, tighter formations, and we can run cross different ways um, out of every formation or personnel grouping. All right, so here here it is. This is cross. All right, so look at our protection. All right, same as what I talked about earlier in the system. Same protection, slide side, zone side, man side, okay? Now, big difference is you can send the back out immediately if you want to, okay? That's up to you. I can, I can, I can go right now to the back out and then we throw hot off here, okay? That's great, okay? The one thing you can also do is you can check swing your back, Okay, that's effective too. Okay, so you know you can run it both ways. We've run it both ways. Okay, uh, which one do I like better? I don't know. I like mixing it up. 
Okay, and, and it's just a simple coverage call, you know, and if it we're playing a team that, that I think that the back going out right now really pulls that Sam out of the curl window, then, then we'll probably release the back right now. If I think this team is going to bring a lot of pressure and I want to throw a cross and I want a six-man protect it and I don't know when they're bringing the pressure, I can call a protection to where he can be responsible for that B gap. And then if nobody comes, he can come out late and we can still work to him in the progression. Okay, so, you know, don't get hung up on the back right there on which is better. I think you game plan it. I think you, I think you install it both ways. Okay. Um, so, all right, let's talk about the read for the quarterback. All right, it is a three-step gun drop. Majority of our pass concepts uh, in the full field scheme are three-step drop gun drops. Okay, um, I'm, I do plan on doing some quarterback drill stuff uh, later on in this system as we build this system, and, and I can give you a lot of drills for that. However, I don't handcuff our quarterbacks in to, I don't categorize our pass game in like what like we used to do in old school, quick game, one step, gun drop, all right. And then you got this list of things. And then, oh, drop back. Okay, these are our drop back concepts. So he's got to take a three-step gun drop. Well, this might be considered to some as a drop back passing scheme. And it is. All right? But sometimes he may have to one step to get the ball out to where he wants it to go. Or he may have to do a three-step gun drop. All right? It's all dictated on what he reads and what he sees. Okay? So let's let's so don't get hung up on that either. I tell our quarterback, your drops depend on what your decision is you're going to make. If it's a pre-snap read and he's got to get it out right now, he's going to one-step it. If the free access isn't open and he has to read it and go through his true progression, he'll three-step it. All right, so right here, number one for the quarterback on the read is he's looking in the free access area. I put a box around it so you can see it. The free access area, all right? And, and he's trying to decide, and this is all pre-snap, it happens quickly, all right? It may sound like a lot, but if you rep it enough, your quarterback, that's what he's going to be focused on pre-snap. The X receiver is going to run a mandatory outside release, vertical route, holding the bottom of the numbers. That means he's going to try to get outside of that corner, make that corner turn his back and run with him, right? We want that corner to turn his back and bail, all right? So what the quarterback is looking at is, is he one-on-one, -on -one? okay? Is he one-on-one -on -one with that corner? Is there no safety help? If so, he is allowed to take a shot at the X receiver on cross, Okay, if if uh, there's no safety help, if they're playing some type of steel coverage or man coverage or, or one high something and that corner doesn't have safety help and he's tight depth leverage eyes. How deep is it? Is he tight coverage? If it's a man coverage and we feel pretty good about our matchup with our ex receiver. He's a really good player right now for us. OK, and we like that matchup and we think we got one on one. We're going to take the shot at it now. When does he do it and when does he not do it? Well, I don't try to, I try to teach him to make the best decision that he can make and then I live with it, all right? I don't, I mean, if it's third and two, all right, and I call cross and he throws a vertical, all right, and it's incomplete and we have to punt, that's probably my fault for calling the play. If he got it right and it was one-on-one -on -one and he read it correctly, then how can I get mad at him for doing what I taught him to do? All right, so, so you know, there's got to be some ownership as a play caller, all right, and, and if it's not successful and you've given him the free access options. Those are the things you're going to have to learn, learn to live with when you're throwing the RPOs in this system and when you're throwing the free access stuff in this system. So he, that's what he's looking at first. Okay, now, if there's no flat defender, okay, there's nobody defending the flats. This safety's high, all right, this corner is off, okay, this is the first read in the progression. 
if he has a free access out, he likes that play, he can one step it and rip it out to the, to the out right now. All right, if the corner's belling with the deep route, the safety's over the top, and there's no flat defender, we're gonna take the free access out every day. Okay, so he's looking at that. Now, if it's kind of fuzzy, all right, and he, and, and he, he doesn't quite know what that corner is going to do, if there's any doubt, if he knows he can't one step and just throw that out, he's going to get in his three-step gun drop and read the progression, okay? And the progression goes like this, all right? One, two, three, all right? And on that third, when he comes out of his crossover phase, that back foot hits the ground, all right, he's going to throw this on rhythm if he likes that, if that's open, okay? He'll know quickly if, if, if it's not there. He'll know by that third step if it's not there. So by that third step, he knows it's there, boom, on a rhythm throw, he's going to get it out, and he's going to hit the, the uh, H over there in the flats. All right, third step, it's not there. He's going to get his eyes on the cross right here. He's going to get his eyes in the cross, okay? And, 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 and the cross is the Y. He's working at an angle, and he's almost like a ladder. He's going to avoid collision. Is he over the mic or is he under the mic? It depends. Don't handcuff the receiver in, hey, you got to be under the mic, or hey, you got to be over the mic. Well, that mic might, may step up then obviously he's going to be over him, right? All right? So, you know, we want him getting to a depth. You know, we want him to get to a depth of somewhere around 12 to 15 yards towards the opposite hash, climbing on his cross, all right? So he's got an aiming point of opposite hash in the 12 to 15-yard area, okay? Don't go above 15 yards. You probably need to start flattening out if you get that far, all right? But he's got to go, and he's got to go at a great angle, and he's got to work depth and width at the same time. Now, if the mic bails, you're playing a team who is really, is really um, expecting pass, and that mic backer right here just bails, you know, he may have to get under the mic and then climb a little higher to get to his landmark, right? All right, so, so that's going to take some reps to get used to. He does not want to push upfield, okay? He don't want to take two, two or three steps upfield. He's got to go right now at a great angle, all right? So, so he's working across the field. So the quarterback goes one, two, three. The rhythm out is not there. I'm not throwing that. He's going to step up and start looking for the cross. If the cross is not there, he's going to get his eyes to the curl. Okay. How often has we, have we hit the curl? Okay. A little bit. All right. And some, you got to remember, some people say, well, that's going to be a long time to get back to this. It happens fast. Remember, he's going to know if he's not going to throw this. You know, so you could argue instead of going one, two, three, okay, you could argue that the progression is one, two, to the back, all right? But the way I teach it is, you know, you can get a look at that out in your drop, okay? So he's going to work this curl. Now, the curl, it is not a traditional post curl, 14 back to 12, you know, traditional post curl, or it's not a 15 yard almost comeback to the ball, old school curl, all right? We tell this guy now, he's gonna run and he's gonna push at about 12 to 14 yards, all right? It's gonna be 12 to 14 yards, all right? And then he's gonna put the brakes on, put his foot in the ground, and he's gonna find grass, okay? He's gonna find grass because we really like to run this to the field. When the ball's on the hash, run it to the field because that's so much grass that Sam Backer has to cover, right? All right, so, so if the Sam Backer drops straight back, maybe the curl needs to sit down and work over in here a little bit, okay? And we can get it out to him, all right? 
Typically, that doesn't happen. If that were to happen, we'd probably go ahead and go to the back. All right? But if the SAM is dropping to the curl zone, then we can almost run into a choke down dig type curl. Okay? He can bring it in. Fine grass. Find that open window. It's going to stretch. It's going it's to be more grass to work with if you run it to the field. Okay, so we like this play in the middle of the field or on the hash. I don't like bringing the cross to the field. Okay, you can, but that's a long throw if you if you you know for the quarterback. It, um, and there's not a lot of room to work to curl in the boundary. Okay, um, you know that you could argue too that, that there's no flat defender, so the curl may be better in the boundary. But I typically like it to the field, as there's more grass to work with and more space to make that Sam linebacker cover. All right, so um, but you can't do either. So you work the curl to the back, all right? So, so he's going pre-snap, he's reading the out concept, and then he's going, you know, in his drop one, two, three, um, flats, cross, curl, back. And just like that, boom, 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 boom. It works out great. Now, start getting good at this, great. Now let's start doing some things like tagging stuff. Like this right here, this is, let's say you're playing a cover three team or a cover two team and you want to you wanna change it up. This is Y cross smash, okay? So you got your free access instead of an out and an MOR, you have a smash concept over here, okay? So it's just, if it's cover three, if it's loose coverage, you can one step it and throw the hitch out there, okay? Or you can one step it and throw the corner, all right? So you read your smash area. It also really holds these defenders on this side of the hash. So you can work this side. Okay? So it's all about holding those guys. Now, if it doesn't hold them, he wants to cover this. He wants to get on this. Look, you got one guy covering two. Okay? So that, that, that's where we're trying to get to make teams to defend the whole field. All right? And you got to do the free access to do that. You got to give your quarterback the liberty to, to, to work some free access stuff, all right, to hold teams accountable backside. All right, so it's the same thing. The smash is, is, is totally pre-snap. He's going to decide pre-snap, I'm going with the smash, okay? If he does not decide to go with the smash, then he goes through his cross progression, cross, curl, back. So it's a true one, two, three okay um you know and we really look at leverage and the the safety when we're doing this all right so pre-snap smash i don't like it he's really working that and then if it, it's not there he's going to work the cross the curl the back so so that, that's a little thing and you could tag it you, you could go y cross you know whatever your signal is for y cross smash or you can give it any other name. We would call that Y cross smash. Our kids know that the back side of that, they have a smash. Like what we try to do off our field, full field concepts, I like to build shot plays off of our full field concepts, okay? So when teams start to cheat and get nosy to stop that intermediate stuff, we have a shot play dialed up for that, okay? And that's what this is, all right? And I'm going to talk about our sale concept a little bit later on when we get into our vertical game. All right, so this is why I cross sale, all right? When this play is called, when this play is called, our quarterback knows, hey, Coach Troxler wants me to take a shot right here. All right, he wants me to take a shot. The reason why he's calling this play is because we're going to try to beat him over the top. Okay, so this is how we read this. All right, let's say we're playing a team, and, we, and again, you got to call full field stuff multiple times. And we're calling cross, we're calling cross, we're really working cross. All right, and they're giving us a too high look. And this safety is just getting tired of getting off the hash and covering over here and then we're just hitting the cross all day. 
You know, he's sick of it. So he's getting yelled at by his coaches. And so now he's going to jump this cross. All right? Don't forget the human element in things. All right? Don't forget the human element when you're planning for this stuff. All right? So the kid starts jumping the cross. And you'll see that as a coach as you're working through it and you're calling this play multiple times. Again, if you've got 10 pass concepts, by the time you work through them all in a game, it's going to be the third quarter, and you don't know what – you really hadn't established the defense jumping anything, all right? So it's harder to get shot plays off when you're really consistent and run the same thing over and over and over and over, and you've got some shot plays built into it. Now you can start taking shots on those defenses. All right, so the the, the safety wants to get nosy on the, um, on the cross. Now we've got our sail route. All right, our post. All right, so he's a deep post, a vertical post. And by, by, by that, I mean he's not crossing the hatch. It's pretty skinny. All right, it's five steps. His foot's in the ground, and he's aiming, you know, one yard outside the hatch. All right, almost for the upright on that side. And he's running. All right, our quarterback... Like, again, this isn't true progression. This is this is he knows we're going to take a shot right here. All right, so our quarterback is getting his eyes on the safety in his drop. It is one, two, three. Once he goes through that progression, he's going to know if he's got the post. If that safety's flat-footed, if the safety jumps the cross. He, put, he puts that third step in the, in the ground. He's working up in the pocket, and he's ripping the post for a touchdown. All right? Safety bails. We don't like it. We just go into our Y cross progression. So safety bails. We don't like the post. He goes, all right, I'm going I'm to go through my progression of cross. Cross, curl, back. All right, so you can have your little shot play build off cross. Um, there's a lot of other things you can do. You can put the X and go X cross. You know, there's a lot of variations you can do of this. All right, but this is the base way the, that we like to run it. We like to run a, a shot play off of this. So um, really get good at that. Really get good at noticing when that safety is starting to get nosy. And this is a safe shot play. I like shot plays opening a game up with a shot play. I like it in the third quarter. You know, I like it on sudden change. Um, but I also like shot plays that if it's not there, you've got some type of bailout. you got somewhere to go with the football other than just throwing it, you know, as deep as you can, and it's either touchdown or incomplete. So this is a way to get us, okay, we're running a shot play, but then if it's covered, it rolls right into a full true progression scheme. So uh, this, is, this is really good stuff right here. All right, so um, the film I have of this, okay, I have a lot of different variations of way we ran cross on film. Again, I'll be adding to this content as this thing goes on. I'll be adding a lot of 2020 stuff once we get rolling here, uh, here hopefully in August. All right, so uh, right here, let's see, we've got, we've got our cross here. Now, we did run cross in a full back set. You see that? Now, now you can really max protect this thing, all right? You can really max protect this thing. You've got the cross here, and you've got the curl guy here and the back and the flats, okay? Back side. Back side, we either ran an MOR or we'll run a post to hold the back side. So really, when we run it out of our full back set, all right, we're reading curl to f cross, curl the flats. So he's looking, our Y's getting across the field. He is over the mic. Look at the sound backer. He's really dropping, really, really dropping to get in. This is one of our team pass sessions uh, at practice. And we take the back. Sam's dropping, boom, let's dump it off to the back for a big game. It's a really good play for us. It's a way to get a curl flat scheme 
in your offense that's a little, you know, with, with a few more options on it than just calling curl flat out of two by two. All right, same thing here. Got the fullback in, all right, and he's running across the field on the cross, and we got the curl and we got the back going in the flats right now. Now, I will say this. When we have a fullback in the game, all right, he's in the protection, I always release the back on cross, okay? Always release the back on cross when there's a fullback in the game just because I don't want to sit in there with seven-man protection on this scheme. We've got, you know, we've taken a man out of the route because of adding the fullback, so we've added the back here. Same thing. He's over the mic. I'd like to see him a little deeper on his cross. And we're working the curl. As you can see, the Sam linebacker gets pulled by the back, right? All right, so that's going to create where we can work grass in this area. But look at all that field we had to work with. It's a lot of grass for that Sam linebacker to cover. Nice throw by our quarterback. Okay, here's a version of cross out of two by two. This is our sail concept with it, where we're running a deep sail. This is what I drew up earlier. This is the sail concept where we're post, we're sail, and now we're running the cross here. Okay, and this is actually a version of our Z cross. So he's one, two, three. Again, this is one of the deals where we kept the back in because it's a shot play. And we hit the cross. Same thing here, two by two cross. We're running sail with it. Pre-snap, our quarterback noticed that it's a one high, one high here. So he wants, it looks like man coverage, so he wants to go ahead and work the post and the sail, which is a good decision, okay? And then over here, we got the cross and the curl, okay? So as man coverage, quarterback works one, two, three, he's working the sail route. A little late on the throw. I'd like to see him one, two, three, and throw that more of a rhythm throw. Now, here's, here's a version of cross out of a two fullback or a fullback and a utility back um, play. All right, so we got my man here in the flats. All right, we've got our curl. No, and actually, we tagged a post in, in this game with it. All right, so this is an interesting thing. We... We ran a post because this team was bailing on our really good receiver and we're bringing the cross here and we're getting our utility back in the flats. Okay, so this is a version of cross that you can run. We've got three people defending the cross, right? And he's coming in that vacated space. The utility back's a little too deep. All right, so this concept or version of cross, the quarterback is reading post to cross to back. Okay, so it's a nice little, uh, almost like a flood scheme. All right, but it's just cross. It's, it's, it's how we run the cross out of a condensed formation. Great protection. We've got our slide side. We've got it max protected here. And again, this was a, this was a uh, shot play for us. All right, here's a version of cross, and it's a good play. It's, it's, and like I said, I like to put some bad clips because I think you can learn more off bad clips than you can great clips. All right, so I like to try to find some bad clips when I'm presenting these things to show you guys so we can learn and get better. All right, so, so we're running the Y cross. We're running the Y cross here, okay? Uh, we got a post here. Oh. Got a post here, and then the curl's here. Back's releasing. All right, so, so the read is, the read is, 
um, cross, curl, back. All right, and our, our, our two things happen here. Our Z doesn't get deep enough in his route. All right, and so it, it doesn't create a lot of conflict for the sound. We complete it, and as you can see, the, the Sam is wanting to run with the back. But if he pushes just a, four more yards deeper like he's supposed to, this corner goes ahead and commits to bail it. And now it creates a lot more space because um, he's covering the back. A lot of space here, a lot of grass here that we can, we can complete this ball in. Because the mic... The mic, he starts to widen, but then he's got to redirect to sit under the cross. All right? He's covering the back. Got a lot of space here. So make sure de running the depth of the, of the concept is very important. Very important. It was, it was a positive play, but it just we could have got more out of it if, if we ran at the proper depth. We will do some check with me's. Uh, I'll get into some of that in the communications part later in this system. That's our Y cross, um, just the base level Y cross. I will be adding more to this um, presentation. Uh, I'll be adding more film in the system as we work alongside with Glazer Clinics in, in these systems.